Transformation is only valid if it is carried out with the people, not for them. Liberation is like childbirth and a painful one. The person who emerges is a new person, no longer either oppressor or oppressed, but a person in the process of achieving freedom. And it is only the oppressed who, by freeing themselves, can then free their oppressors. And that was said by Paulio Freire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be here, and I will be your host for the next hour. Well, folks, yes, I'm back. I was going to take a couple of weeks off, but I feel there is just too much happening in the world to have an extended break right now. So I've only had a week off, and I've postponed the things I wanted to do until a little later. And yes, things have certainly been escalating throughout the world, haven't they? In this last two weeks alone, we have seen the total failure of BP's top kill attempt to stop the oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico, just as most people knew it would, though we all hoped against all logic that it would be otherwise. In fact, the situation in the Gulf of Mexico appears to have deteriorated at an alarming rate in the last couple of weeks. Alongside that situation, we have seen two volcanoes erupt in the countries of Guatemala and Ecuador virtually simultaneously, and also a small earthquake in Panama, all of which are very likely related to the continuing oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico. You'll find that as this plate shifts above the oil, we'll we'll see more seismic activity around the area. And most distressingly, we have also seen in the last couple of weeks the International Aid Flotilla headed into Gaza to deliver humanitarian aid to the people of Palestine. We have seen this flotilla attacked by Israeli terrorists in international waters. Now, I do very much intend to return to the situation in Gaza later in the show because it really does need to be addressed. But for now, I'm afraid I really must once again dedicate some time to the alarming situation that is continuing to unfold in the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, I would expect most of today's broadcast to be dedicated to the oil leak in the Gulf, folks, simply because it is a situation that affects not only the people of America, but the entire world. And as I've previously said, it is a situation that really does seem to be deteriorating rapidly. According to reports coming in, it would very much appear that there is an almost total media blackout on the true facts regarding this oil leak, folks. There's a lot of headline news about it, there's a lot of fear-mongering and finger-pointing, but there appears to be very little real information regarding the true extent of the damage, and it would appear that the situation is in fact many times worse than any mainstream sources are leading the people to believe. According to reports from documentary filmmaker James Fox, the situation on the ground in Louisiana is many times worse than the media reports that have been issued to the people as there is a fear that the population may panic if the reality regarding the true extent of the damage was made known to the public at large. And I'll return to that in a moment. But for now, I'd like you to recall that a few weeks ago, and I think even on the last show I did two weeks ago as well, I expressed my belief that the oil spill was, in fact, a planned and deliberate event. And now, as more and more evidence comes to light, I must reiterate that belief. I say this based on the following observations. Number one, we've had the talk of an event being staged, like a 9-11 event, which this, as the greatest environmental disaster in the history of the world, clearly is. Number two, we have Goldman Sachs putting shorts on an oil rig collapse in the Gulf of Mexico and dumping 44% of its BP stock just weeks prior to the event. Number three, we have Halliburton themselves being responsible for the shoddy cementing that was very likely at least partially responsible for the disaster. And then we have Halliburton also gaining control of an oil spill cleaning company a very short time before the incident occurred. 
Number four, we have the obviously ineffective methods being employed by BP to clean up the mess. The methods being employed by BP are in fact so ineffective and well known to be ineffective that it's almost become blatantly obvious that they simply don't want to clean it up yet. They don't care about the oceans, folks. They don't care about the oceans or the aquatic life or people's livelihoods that are being affected. They only care about their agenda. I mean, seriously, folks, you've just got to look at it. I mean, the top hat, the junk shot, the top kill, these are all methods that have been tried before during such events as the Ixtoc oil rig disaster in 1979 and all were proven to be completely ineffective way back then. And that was in trying to cap an oil well in a mere 200 feet of water. So how on earth could these proven to be ineffective methods have ever been thought to even be remotely successful in capping the deep water horizon well when the well is located in 5,000 feet of water? The answer, of course, is that they couldn't have ever been thought to be successful. In fact, the obvious and quite disturbing answer is that they were all done in order to buy time to allow the damage to worsen. They are all done in order to help create the perfect environmental disaster. Number five, we have the absolute inaction and procrastination of the Obama administration and the fact that in the face of this worst environmental disaster in the history of the world, BP, whose irresponsible and unethical actions caused the problem to begin with, were themselves put in charge of the clean-up operations. As most eloquently pointed out by someone and posted on my Facebook page, if someone were to start a fire in a building, it would seem that under these new guidelines, then the only person able to work at putting out the blaze should be the arsonist himself. Number six, we have the utterly excessive use of the highly toxic chemical dispersant Corexit 9500 that is being used on the oil. In fact, over a million gallons of this stuff has now been used, folks. And this stuff has been banned by the EPA. It's way more toxic than the oil, folks. They shouldn't be using this stuff. And the use of this chemical may well mean that what we have seen so far with this incident may be only a mere foreshadowing of what is to come because this chemical may yet create an environmental disaster, the likes of which the world has never seen. To empty such a high concentration of toxic chemicals into the Gulf just prior to hurricane season may well see within a short time an acid rainfall that will contaminate and destroy the entire southern United States, an event that would, of course, bring about the need for mass evacuations of the southern states and possibly more. Is anyone still wondering what the hundreds of as yet empty FEMA camps are likely to be used for now, folks? Oh yes, and number seven, if you actually read BP's own report on the event, you find that some unknown modifications were made to the now-failed blowout preventer just prior to the event occurring. Yes, good old BP. They say, oh, and by the way, someone, we don't know who, came along and did something, we don't know what, to the blowout preventer just before it blew out. But it's all good. It's probably nothing. I mean, it just goes on and on, doesn't it really, folks? But look, let, let's be honest about it, folks. Let's look at the situation. Okay, look, let's say you're the president and suddenly you're facing the situation of a leaking oil well in the ocean, a leaking oil well in extremely close proximity to some of the most diverse and ecologically important wetlands on Earth. So what do you do? Well, You have a functioning brain, so you know that such a thing has the potential to cause an environmental catastrophe of unprecedented proportions, and so you know you must act quickly to contain the spill. You have a functioning brain, so you know that all corporations are based on self-service and will lie and offer false information at every opportunity, and so the corporation responsible has most likely downplayed the extent of the damage being occurred and you know that you won't really know the true extent of the damage until it's been investigated by an independent scientific team. 17 other nations also understand the extent of the damage that could be caused from this event and so they offer you help in the form of manpower, skimmer vessels and vessels capable of 
pumping up and containing up to a million gallons of oil per day and thus having the potential to almost completely contain any oil plumes that are being formed underwater. And again, you have a functioning brain, so you know that there have been many, many trials proving beyond any doubt that oil-eating microbes could clean up all the leaked oil in a matter of weeks. So what do you do? Can anyone see an answer here, folks? I mean, it's really pretty simple, isn't it, folks? 